Uh, Paulus Musters is the Material Labs Manager at the University of Arizona College of Architecture. Hi, Paulus. How are you doing? Yes, I'm good, Don. Thank you. Tell us, uh, tell us about how you're using uh, RhinoCam and how it fits into your curriculum there at University of Arizona. And we have some other slides here, so just when you're ready to uh, go to the slides, just let us know. Uh, sure, you can go to the next slide. Here at the University and the College of Architecture, we're using Rhino pretty exclusively for 3D modeling and design. So RhinoCam Nexoff's product was a great fit for us. And the way we use it, it's integrated right from the beginning classes, like learning how to use uh, RhinoCam to generate the G-code for our CNC router. Uh, here you're looking at a, a pretty sophisticated project uh, that took a couple of years, but the uh, CNC element of it was to machine the molds that created those ceramic pieces that you're looking at there, which basically is a, a something similar to a CMU block. So we're making a tile wall for a house structure. Uh, it has to let light in as well as keep the heat out. I'm in the desert southwest, so that was its, some of its parameters. But the uh, CNC created the shapes along the outside just based on line. So it was about how to use the CNC creatively, uh, not to model these things, but to actually allow the tool pathing to create designs itself and you're looking at a final product there. Um, you can go to the next slide. So that this is a process uh, shot of making the ceramic tiles, uh, these CMU type blocks which took about uh, again a whole summer to produce several hundred of them and we made a wall. Again the master molds were cut out of uh, MDF on the CNC so the uh, software allowed for that kind of precision. And also we directly CNC plaster molds for, in order to create these ceramic pieces that you see here. For again, prototyping, that was a very quick way to do that. So you're looking at basically how to integrate that software into their design creativity. So RhinoCam was used to machine the, the, top, the top half of that ceramic uh, mold. RhinoCam was used to machine uh, an MDF uh, cavity that actually molded the top part that is actually the mold. Is that what we're looking at? That's correct. On the left, you can see that there's an MDF master mold. And mm -hmm. then there's a very specific type of uh, ceramic mold that's full of an, a mold duct that allows air to punch through the plaster to knock the clay off of the mold after you press it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we've done several other, uh, again, this was, that's a very elaborate procedure to get a, uh, a master mold to pull, you know, thousands of tiles out of. But first we would prototype and directly carve into the plaster itself. Um, and again, the software allows us to quickly have different iterations. Mm -hmm. So we were seeing, seeing plaster, yes, which is a, li a little bit of a trick. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, and this slide in Ben's product, the same thing. You're looking at a, a final mold on the right-hand side in Corian that we machined out. And there's a very good shot on the right center that shows the ball uh, coming from a radius point and getting larger as it's moving away. So they worked a lot with that. And in this case, what it does is refract the light. So this is basically a a, a wall of light being refracted through a uh, glass aperture opening and uh, we also machined in the Corian to make masters to pour the glass in. So all of that was done. You know, mostly this is using the software creatively. Yes. And here you see uh, prototypes on the left, rubber molds being pulled from the prototypes and then glass being poured into that. And then we had a final one on the upper right that is the uh, uh, graphite mold, actually. So we machined that out as well. And uh, you, see, you see molten glass being poured into there. So, th so those apertures, are they, they're they shown on the bottom left, right? The little triangular? That's, that, that's correct, yes. Those, 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 are, those are glass? No, those are prototypes. That was plastic. Okay. 
but on the right hand side was the final part. So again, the CNC allows for a lot of iterations, which you can see on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. uh, just to quickly make something, the plastic imitated what the glass was going to be because that was quite an investment in time right. to uh, go to uh, the graphite mold and then actually do the pouring of the glass. So yeah, that was, uh, was quite a project. And you can see in the upper middle the CNC happening in progress there with tiny little bits. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So it's a great it's a great creative tool that you uh, do something. It's just part of our process. And here this shows it really well. It's going to become something else. So each student actually learns to use Ronocam, and they create they learn how to cut their tool pass themselves. Yes, they're required to make their own file and run the CNC in the wow. beginning. That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. It's scary, actually. <laughs> no, that wow wasn't a scary wow. That was that was a cool wow. <laughs> well, it's a it's a cool wow, and, and uh, really, this is an introduction, just like all of our other tools. I mean, there's ten thousand square feet of tools, so mm -hmm. uh, ceramics, glass, plastics, vacuum forming, spin casting, all of these things are introduced. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in their upper level uh, classes, as they move forward, they get to decide if this is going to play a part in their designs or not. Right. Okay. But you are you are looking here at something that was a two year process. Okay. So they they learn RhinoCam at the beginning uh, of this right. process, and then if it fits into what they're wanting to design, uh, then they know how to use it, and they'll just do, run with it. That's correct. Okay, cool. Yes. Let's yes. see. I think we got another slide that shows the results of this. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's a that's a beautiful uh, wall doing again testing on the right hand side, and that is slip cast ceramics that were fired uh, in that hollow mold, and you see the slip cast on the left hand side. Again, that was machined directly uh, for all the prototypes in the plaster on oh. the CNC. Okay. So. Yeah, it makes a makes a beautiful product. So the uh, one in so, the bottom left is that a plaster? Or is that the actual? That is a ceramic, uh, unfired. Okay. Ready to okay. fired. Yes. So that's a slip, uh, slip cast. Okay. Hollow. Mm -hmm. You can tell that there's a in those holes, those apertures. You can there's a hollow space in there, and then there's another wall of ceramics on the inside. Right. That's you can see that in the bottom right here. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it was a uh, it was a beautiful design. So again, all the prototyping we could model that very easily in Rhino, and then simulate that in RhinoCam to see what that was going to look like before we went to the final, even the prototyping. So the spreading of the light there in the bottom right, that's all done by the glass aperture and the machining uh, grooves that you've machined into the sidewalls. That's correct, and this was a uh, an entire entire wall so it it uh, the refraction of light caused a, a rainbow of colors around each one of the tiles as the sun was moving that would all change oh okay well, that's pretty cool so, yeah it's it's a sim think about inside of a church and the stained glass windows mm-hmm yep yeah it, it had that kind of effect it was quite beautiful uh, Paulus I just wanted uh, one note here uh, Users may have some questions. Could you hang around with us uh, for the question and answer session? Yes, of course. Okay. Okay, great. 